Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to Health Issues. My name is Dr. Munir Ravalia. I'm a practicing dental surgeon. And inshallah, I hope you've been benefiting in the Ramadan of some of the issues and ideas we have been just for having some tasters on, inshallah. Today, I want to look at a specific medicine or a cure for us that is honey. And this is narrated by Ibn Abbas that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he stated that healing is in three things. One is a gulp of honey, one is cupping, and one is the branding with fire, or also known as cauterization. But he وسلم, forbade his followers to use the cauterization. Another tradition narrated by Abu Sayyid al Khudri stated that a man came to the Prophet وسلم, and said, My brother has abdominal trouble. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to him, let him drink honey. The man came a second time, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, let him drink honey. Again the man returned for the third time, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, let him drink honey. The man returned the final time, and he said, I have done that. And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said that Allah has said the truth, but your brother's abdomen has told the lie, meaning that he was utilizing the honey, but he's not benefiting him. Maybe he didn't have belief in this. So he said, let him drink the honey. So he made him drink the honey again, and he was cured. But remember, the shifa is from Allah. When anyone gives a course of treatment, whether it be honey, it be milk, it be black seed, it be hijama, irrelevant of the type, as long as obviously we can try and utilize those medicines that were given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and used by the Prophet, peace be upon him. But we should realize that the cure only comes from God. Because there may be people who maybe don't utilize the honey, maybe don't utilize the hijama, maybe don't utilize the milk, but they get a cure from something, and this is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it requires truly a belief. I've seen those patients who truly believe in the hijama, they have a full belief that this is from the prophetic tradition, and this is a given to us by our Creator. Then psychologically, they are benefiting before they've even had the treatment. And alhamdulillah, the patients that I've seen treated, or the patients that I've treated myself for this, have benefited greatly from these prophetic traditions. Now, if we look specifically into honey, it's a source of vitamins and minerals. Honey contains a wide variety of these things. And again, these things depend on where the types of flowers we use, the bee that created the honey, you get different flavors. You know, this is all the, the, the ni'mah from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, it's shown that honey has very good antibacterial and antifungal properties. And when I was working in one of the hospitals, after some of the big surgery, where they re reconstruct patients after head and neck trauma or cancer, they have now gone back to using patches that are soaked in honey. So instead of using antibacterial agents or medicines or lotions, actual patches that are soaked with honey onto the area. And they, they're finding a lot of benefit in this. And a lot of studies are being conducted. But we see this 1400 years ago, that our blessed Prophet Sallallahu he advised us from this. Because this is coming from who? It's coming from our Creator. So this, we're talking about honey in wound management, being utilized a lot in the nursing standards of actually advising uh, the practice of using honey, honey paste. Also leeches, if we look back into the old history, similar maybe to hijama, some people would correlate, well, leeches are doing the same thing as hijama. Maybe they are, but we are utilizing the practice of the medicine that the way our Prophet, peace be upon him, utilized it. So not using the leeches, maybe the benefit is coming from that, but we are utilizing that method which has the blessing from our blessed Prophet So we see that Honey has antimicrobial properties. It deodorizes the bad smell of wounds, maybe infections. And it speeds up the healing process by stimulating wound tissues. I've heard of a story of an individual who damaged his hand. His hand was cut. And he had such strong faith in the honey and the prophetic medicine 
that he utilized only honey on his hand. Now we would think maybe this is crazy. He's lost his fingers. And why isn't he taking any drugs, any medication, having surgery? But he had full conviction in this. And therefore, our Lord benefited him from the shifa and from the, the honey. Now, another medicine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is the benefit of the olive. And it states in Surah Teen, وَتِينِ zaytun. So by the fig and the olive. So the fig have benefit for us as well. And the zaytun again has many beneficial health properties. A lot of minerals. But very good to use, try and substitute using the zaytun, the olive oil, instead of other oils. Maybe we use this fatty ghee oil to cook our food in. Try and substitute because this have a blessing in it that is directly related to us in the Quran. Another indication that the olive represents goodness is if we look at the olive branch brought back by the pigeon from Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, released from the ship to examine the state of the floods. So we see the pigeon brought back the olive branch and he alayhi salam, knew that the land had reappeared and that the vegetation was growing. And if we look today, we can buy oils from many, many countries all over the world. There is Zaytun from Palestine, helping our brothers and sisters who are in difficult situations. If we look at a different issue now, what are the medical benefits of the prayer, the night prayer, the Salat al tarawi in Ramadan? There are many benefits from it. So if we look at that in conjunction with the five daily prayers, we discussed before that the sugar levels drop in the blood in Ramadan. Because we are unable to eat, we can't lift these up until we break our fast or have the pre-fasting meal. So it is shown when you physically place your head down on the ground in the sujood position, this increases the amount of blood that goes to the brain. So for example, in the night prayers, depending on which mosque you go to, maybe it's a prolonged period of time. And what you get is pooling due to gravity, the blood pools to the feet. This is natural. And so if you don't have enough energy in you, you can feel become lightheaded, dizzy. But if we look at the greatness of the prayer, there is something to counteract this. So when we go down into the sujood, into the prostration position, the blood is rushing to the head. And this is how the body works when someone wants to faint. When someone wants to faint, the mechanism behind this, not enough blood, glucose, sugar, is getting to the brain. Therefore, the body wants to tip itself, fall into the supine or laying position, so that the blood and the energy replenishes the brain is the energy again. So if we look at a natural remedy for this, instead of one fainting, they have in the prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the position of prostration that can counteract this. So we gain benefit from the, the actual prayer itself physically. Again with the, the wudu, this is like taking a bath, people describe five times a day. So you are cleaning your mouth, you're cleaning your nose, cleaning your hands and feet and other parts of the body. So constantly Islam is reminding us and advising, advising us to cleanse ourselves. But it's not only through the wudu and the prayer, which is the, maybe the outside cleansing, but it's that physical cleansing inside of the soul. But then in Ramadan, we also want to physically cleanse our bodies of all that rubbish and gunk that maybe the other parts of the year we haven't been benefiting ourselves from. Again, regular exercise is very important. So the prayer is a form of exercise. But not to say that we just do the five prayers and leave out, because exercise is very beneficial for the heart to keep it functioning, to able to pump the blood to the organs, to keep things efficient. And as we discussed about the wudu, relating all these things together, if we look at all these issues together, it's such a benefit from our Creator. And because He has created us, He knows what is good for us. So if we look at Abu Malik al-Ashari, he reported that the Prophet wasallam said, purification is half of faith, half of belief. And alhamdulillah, this fills the scales between whatever is in the heaven and the earth. And the prayer is a light. And sadaqah is a clear proof of this. And patience is a shining light. And the Quran is a proof for or against you. And every person starts the day dealing for his own soul. So either he is set free or either he destroys it. And this is narrated in Muslim. So this is something that we can take benefit from, inshallah. Now what about the blood? We're talking about blood a lot the blood circulatory system. The blood, if we think of a tree, the tree uptaking the water, and it has the large branches, like the arteries of the body. 
from this following the veins, the smaller vessels, and then following this from this, the small capillaries. If these small capillaries at the end don't get enough, like the tree doesn't get enough water, they wither away and die. So if, not blood, if insufficient blood is penetrating these areas, and this is where people coming up to old age, they start feeling very cold. The periphery, the fingers start feeling very cold. The toes start feeling very cold. And what we see, if we again look back to the prophetic medicine, the treatment with hijama, you can utilize some dry cupping. This is whereby the cup is applied to the body. And this may be a benefit to those of you maybe a little bit wary of having the initial wet cupping done. Could have the dry cupping. And we see this brings about recirculation to the area. So it replenishes that area, rebrings the blood, the nutrition, the food of the body, opens the capillaries. So, hence one doesn't feel cold, the skin doesn't look pale, it becomes red and illuminated. And again, as we mentioned before, 70% of diseases are due to problems in the blood circulation. But a lot of this is caused by our poor diets, by our sedentary lifestyles. It's a very essential to combine all these things together. So inshallah, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Inshallah, we meet again. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Al-Aziz, Al the Almighty. The Almighty. Al-Wadud, Al the All-Loving. All Al-Tawwab, the Acceptor of your return. Al-Razzaq, the Provider. Al-Raqib, the All-Watchful. Walillahi al-Asma'u al-Husna, to Allah belongs the beautiful names. Fad'uhu biha, to call him upon them. To understand more of Allah's beautiful names, join me, your brother Majid Mahmoud, on my new series about understanding Allah's beautiful names on Peace TV. Allah la ilaha illa huwa lahu al-asma'u al-husna Don't miss the chance to comprehend the seamless explanation of Allah's beautiful names in understanding Allah's beautiful names every Saturday at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 11:30 a.m. India on Peace TV Spread salam between you. And then you have an obligation to respond to the person equal or better. Islam initiates conversations. From assumption to reality, from information to wisdom, from opinion to judgment. Focus on the importance of having skills. And these skills develop stronger relationships. And from that relationship, relationship Mahdi Qasqas. you can seriously help somebody and make the helping process easy as we're intending to do here in this Knowledge this to Action knowledge program. To program. Appreciate the just and righteous teachings of Islam along with an impartial attitude that leads you from knowledge to action every Friday at 5 p.m. and repeat telecast at 3.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. I am declaring jihad. And I am inviting all my brothers and sisters in Islam to join in that jihad. And I am inviting all my brothers and sisters in humanity to join me in that jihad. And I'm absolutely sure that every human being is engaged in jihad every day without realizing. Saving this plant and the environment 
is a form of jihad. Join Dr. Jamal Badavi in Peace and Justice next on Peace TV. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu and welcome back to Health Issues. My name is Dr. Muni Ravalia. I'm a practicing dental surgeon, but I also practice the prophetic therapy of hijama. And inshallah, in today's program, I would like to look into the practice of hijama into more detail. So if this is the first time you have heard about this, what is hijama? In English, it literally means cupping or cupping therapy. What does this mean? If we look into the prophetic tradition, which I have mentioned several times before, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, narrated in an authentic hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, that the cure is in three, a gulp of honey, cupping and cauterization, but the Prophet wasallam forbade us to use this final fire branding or cauterization. So what is cupping? If we look at it very simply, the mechanism of action, or the practicalities of it, the application of a vacuum to the certain parts of the body, different parts affecting different ailments, and then the cup is removed, the vacuum is removed, and very small scratches like paper, paper cuts are introduced to the area and the cup reapplied and the vacuum recreated. And hence this sucks out the blood, called the bad blood, to replenish the body. Now, how does this system work? How does it really work? Well, obviously, maybe throughout time, throughout the ages, we'll never be able to fully explain hijama, just like the acupuncture. There's many benefits of it in the Western world nowadays, even in the United Kingdom today. Acupuncture, the Chinese art, the medicine has been approved to be used in clinics. And if we follow hijama, following the meridians, the lines in the body, the energy flow, we follow the same positions. But his narrated the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was cupped on the base of the neck, the position called Al-Qahil. And from this, he said that 70 ailments alone are cured from this side. So regardless of which ailment the patient has, it's very important that the hijama practitioner or the patient has this done at this specific point. Then there are other different points which will follow the meridians specific to the disease. For example, if anybody has chest problems, breathing problems, asthma, respiratory disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or even immunity problems, hay fever, then a point between the breastbone and the chest is utilized by the cupping practitioner to assist them. So for example, they may have two cups, one cup on the back of the base of the neck, the al-qahil, to benefit them as according to the prophetic tradition, and then this area there. Now people may ask, well, how do you know about these points? It's not suddenly that we came up these points. Over long periods of time, practitioners who are very experienced in this field have developed these like charts to say, okay, if you have disease X, the points are Y and Z. If you have disease A, the points in B and C. And sometimes these points are distal, meaning far away from the point. For example, I was taught that somebody, and I've seen cases of this, people with psychological disease, psychiatric disease, they have the cupping on the head, but they also have cupping in further waypoints, for example, on the knees, and the patients gain great benefit from this. Now, well, the mechanism is not really known how this functions, but again, it's following these things called the meridians that are used in the Chinese art of acupuncture. Another type of cupping is dry cupping. So for those of you who may be a little bit scared of the, the cutting, scared of this application, may try the dry cupping. Now, there is a Dr. Tamir Shaban that I work with. In the, I'm the chairman of the International Cupping Society. And the aim of this is to bring practitioners throughout the world. So they, those who are conducting studies, those who have a lot of knowledge in this, this field, a lot of experience, we can all come together and benefit our patients, but also benefit those practitioners that have been conducting this form of medicine for periods of time. But maybe they just need to learn a few little techniques that will benefit themselves and their patients, so we can take this forward to the West, to the East, to the Arab world to say, well, this really is a medicine to be reckoned with. And again, we relate it back to the prophetic tradition that this is a guidance given to us from a blessed prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, which conditions can be treated? Again, 
There is no specific hadith that says, if you have diabetes, have the points done X, Y, and Z. If you have high blood pressure, do it on ABC. Because this would be an endless list of hadith. So the cupping practitioner will take an assessment of the patient in combination with conversation, correspondence with a physician or general medical practitioner and draw up a treatment plan that benefits the patient. So we do not want to cause any adverse effects to our patient. And alhamdulillah, if it is conducted properly in a safe clinical environment following specific cross-infection control procedures, then there should be no detriment to the patient. There will be obviously some issues raised during the treatment, but therefore you give the patient pre-operative advice, advice during the treatment, and post-operative advice. For example, removal of certain quantities of blood will give a shock to the body. This will reduce the blood pressure, and some people can fail. Therefore, practitioners usually would recommend, especially at the first treatment, or even subsequent treatments, the patient lays supine, lays down flat. So preventing, as we discussed before, the need for one to faint so that blood can move from the periphery of the body to the blood of the head. So if someone is lying down, this benefits your patient greatly. So they're not have this stress and this shock during the treatment because this can be very unpleasant for them. As we discussed before, fasting, the month of Ramadan, it's a detox for the body. But we want to utilize all the prophetic medicine, not only in the month of Ramadan, but outside of these times to benefit ourselves, benefit our families, benefit our wider community, and benefit the world at large. Because unfortunately today, whether it be in the West, in the East, in the Arab world, we see the drug companies advising us, you have this pain, take this drug, you have this. A lot of drugs we've been given. Huge expenses to governments, huge expenses to people. People cannot afford these drugs. If we look very simply at painkillers, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, very commonly used in the West, ibuprofen, Nurofen. You have a pain, your doctor, your physician tells you to use this. Now what is it doing? It's suppressing the problem, it's suppressing the pain. It will help you maybe. Over time maybe it will not help you because your body becomes immune to it. But what is the hijama doing? The hijama is saying, let's not suppress the problem, let's actually remove the problem. So those leukotrienes, all those cells that are causing the pain, we're actually saying, let's suck them out so the body it can replenish itself, it can rejuvenate, send back the blood into the body. Very beneficial for us, inshallah. To look at some of the issues, just to highlight again that we have discussed before, the use of the miswak, very important for cleanliness, before prayer, during the prayer, in the, the Ramadan, very important because the miswak has many antibacterial properties, so it reduces the malodor that people may face during Ramadan and can allow you to face the people with a much pleasant light and give a smile because smiling truly is a charity that does not cost us anything and we can utilize this in our daily lives inshallah. I hope I've been smiling enough. I'm trying to. And according to the narration that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he used the miswak and it's a purification for the mouth and it is a way of seeking Allah's pleasure. Also we've looked at the zaytun, the oil, the olive. That it is narrated by Sayyid al-Ansari, narrates that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, eat the olive and massage it over your bodies since it is a blessed tree, the zaytun. And this is related in Tirmidhi. Some practitioners, those who advanced in Islamic knowledge, who conduct maybe hijama with ruqya, they're being known as raqis. For those who are affected maybe with jinn or magic, they would even advise utilizing the olive oil in these circumstances. For example, praying on the jar or the bottle of honey, reading certain verses from the Quran, because we know truly that the Quran is a benefit to us. And it is said in the Quran that truly if this Quran was revealed unto the mountains, it would crumble from the sheer exacerbation from it, the sheer multitude that this Quran, the words of it, because they are from our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these words can be used as a shifa, 
So when we talk about health issues, 